Vertical Aerospace is one of the leading European contenders to introduce new EVATOL aircraft to the air transport sector. At the end of July, the UK company started test flights with a new advanced version of the four-passenger VX4 vehicle it aims to start delivering to operators in 2026. This is a really leading edge advanced prototype. Uh, it's gonna do a whole load of piloted flying. And over the coming months, we're gonna build out that flight test envelope. So starting low to the ground, slow speed flying, propellers generating the lift to get the aircraft off the ground, proving that the aircraft's doing exactly what we expected from all of the testing that we've done in the run up to this and then gradually building out the flight envelope, uh, ultimately flying it as a conventional aircraft and then into what we call transition, where we transition between the lift coming from the propellers to the lift coming from the wing. I think we've got a good opportunity to complete that testing this year. Uh, there's always discovery in flight testing. We can talk a bit more about some of the regulatory environment that we have to go through, which is quite different in the UK for flying a piloted vehicle. So we're working super closely with the regulators, but this is, this is almost like a mini certification program. The minute in the UK you put a pilot on board and you start flying an aircraft, you need to do a huge amount both internally and with the regulators to prove that the aircraft is safe, both for our friend and colleagues, the pilots who fly it, but also we don't have totally remote areas in the UK, so there's this sort of third party risk. Um, so yeah, doing that flying over the coming months, and then that will enable us to then build off that and do some really significant public demonstration flying as well. Vertical's engineering team believes that the huge effort they and their partners have invested in refining key technologies will allow them to meet high safety standards while also accelerating their path to type certification by the Civil Aviation Authority. The UK regulator is closely adhering to the requirements of Europe's EASA agency. This is the first aircraft that we've put our latest generation battery system. Well, actually, we've taken that battery system through the equivalent of a certification program. We've done drop tests, thermal runaway tests, structural tests, vibration tests, uh, three million hours, I think, of cell testing in total, including more than one and a half million on this particular battery system. Um, we've done all the sort of software, electronic hardware testing. So, so many of these checks are already in place. And when you do this kind of piloted flying in the UK, actually a huge amount of the work we do both internally and sharing with the regulators is all of that evidence before you even get to flying. What that then enables you to do of course, we do it very carefully. You know, we're putting a pilot on board. We're, we obviously are managing the safety of doing that. But all of that evidence actually enables you to go relatively quickly. Um, so, you know, effectively, yes, we build out the envelope. We do it incrementally. It's very much following the kind of routes that previous uh, VTOL aircraft have gone through. Um, yes, there is not just checking that the aircraft does the same thing more than once. There's deliberately injecting failures and faults, both in terms of simulation, rig base, and then on aircraft. And then that enables us to proceed with that incremental approach, building it out and doing it safely. The second prototype will build on earlier testing done with a less advanced prototype in 2023. It looks quite a similar shape externally, some refinements, but under the hood, if you like, it's a completely new aircraft. Um, aircraft One, the predecessor, was a full-scale vehicle, but really was only designed for prototype flying and was uh, a very early standard that was really for us to learn quickly. Um, with the fact we were not taking any risk to human life, we had literally about 10% of our strategic suppliers providing equipment and, and technology for that vehicle. This aircraft that jumps to 60%, plus our own battery systems and our own design propeller systems. And so this is a massive step towards a proper aerospace product as opposed to what I describe more like a flying rig. This is really like a full-blown aircraft that has been designed with piloted flying in the first place. Um, so it's significantly safer. It's got a lot of the kind of capabilities, architectures and verification that we would need for a certification aircraft. 
it is also actually a lot more high performing and a lot lighter because we've been able to bring together all the learning from the previous prototype. Significant advances, for example, the battery is 20% more power dense than we had only a year ago, um, and new technologies coming from those uh, top tier suppliers. So um, it isn't the conforming certification aircraft, but if you think about this as a journey towards that conforming aircraft, this is a major step towards that and therefore sets us up really well for then progressing with the certification program. Vertical has consciously selected partners from among the aerospace sector's most experienced manufacturers and specialists in key areas such as flight deck technology and airframe manufacturing. It wants allies who know how to bring aircraft through the arduous certification process and into series production. So Honeywell uh, Aerospace is providing essentially the brains of the aircraft. So um, if you think about flying something like a helicopter, it's really, really difficult to fly. And commercial aircraft are traditionally quite difficult to operate. My nine-year-old daughter could get in our simulator and fly this. In fact, I had a journalist last week who'd never flown an aircraft um, with literally about one minute's training was able in our simulator to take off and fly around and land. Uh, and then and then do the same, reposition the aircraft and land again. So Honeywell's leveraging technology they developed on the world's only supersonic VTOL aircraft, the F-35. We've got a non-militarized uh, version of some of that technology. And that means the aircraft is super simple to fly. And with their avionics suite, Anthem, it's very simple to operate. We've got Leonardo, uh, the facility they use to make Boeing fuselages on the Boeing 787. They've made this outstanding fuselage on our aircraft. And if you actually come and look at it and you look at the quality of craftsmanship in, in that and the wider structures, uh, that's really evident to see. Uh, we've got Molly Cell as the battery cell provider that we integrate into that battery system. Um, and GKN, who actually have helped us enormously throughout this process in uh, leveraging some of their facilities to even assemble the aircraft, but also they've given us all the harnesses. So just a few examples of the kind of suppliers and the, the pedigree of technology that we've been able to bring to bear on this platform. Vertical has already signed agreements with multiple prospective operators and says that it now holds pre-orders for around 1,500 of the new Evitol aircraft. These include major airlines, business aviation groups, and leasing companies, all of which have very high standards and requirements that need to be met. And I think this is perhaps the unique part of our strategy right from the outset. You know, Evitol's a novel. You, we've assembled a world-class team of about 350 people. An awful lot of those are engineers, mostly from an aerospace background. We've certified more than 30 different aircraft and propulsion system types. We bring that together in an ecosystem that can innovate and can really learn about how you develop these novel vehicles. But we've had a really strong foundational principle about partnering, and so on the supplier side, you know, yes, we do the whole aircraft, the batteries and the propellers. Wherever possible, we leverage the best technology, certification, pedigree, industrial capabilities and support from our suppliers. And similarly, we're very clearly an OEM. We're not going to operate the aircraft. And for me, the best products and services are developed by companies who have really, really experienced and demanding customers and you leverage that expertise. So how do you tailor your vehicle to really meet those requirements? So for example, twice a year we run Pioneers events where we bring in all our customers. We talk to the customers literally every week um, and they bring huge expertise in terms of us working with them. What are the kind of missions, you know, using mobile phone data, network planning, the, the operator's local experience of the ecosystem. Where can we start this? You know, where do we not have to rely on some you know, massively long planning permission or future technologies? Where are the kind of really purposeful use cases? What's possible with today's technology? And so if you look at our customers, firstly, we're very diverse in terms of geography. We've got roughly a third in the Americas, third in Europe, third in the Asia Pacific. As you've already called out, we've got top airlines like Japan Airlines, American Airlines, Virgin Atlantic. We've got helicopter operators like Bristow. We've got leasing companies, so Avalon, second biggest leasing company in the world. Their job is buying aircraft and leasing, and most aircraft, that's actually how they're sold today. And we, you know, tourism operators, medivac operators. So all of that expertise is really helping us make sure that the VX4 is the optimum aircraft. And, yeah, we'll unveil more in terms of how some of that 
expertise has really enabled us to bring that in. But I think the opportunity is for us to develop through a classical aviation business model that is very capitally efficient, the best aircraft that is not just a minimum viable product at entry and service, is certified to the highest safety standards, but is, is really competitive in terms of things like economics, operating costs, aircraft performance, but is built with upgradability in mind. So you think about the fact that things like battery technologies with MolyCell, they've got a fantastic roadmap for how that technology is going to improve. Well, we want to capitalize on that. And so the aircraft that our customers buy on day one actually is going to get better all the way through its lifespan. The Evatol aircraft pioneers are attempting to deliver a watershed moment for air transportation one that could amount to something closer to revolution than evolution. It's a tough task, and many companies have faced setbacks along the way, including Vertical, which had to bounce back from its first prototype being badly damaged in test flying. But morale appears to be high at the UK company, with the next phase of flight testing lifting the mood across the whole team. It's pumped, I would say, and, and yes, there are setbacks in aviation. Those of us who've been around long enough, uh, there are always setbacks in aviation, and particularly when you're pushing the sort of boundaries of technology, actually you want those setbacks because that's how you learn. If you never fail anything, you've probably put too much margin in, and then when you come to trying to develop a commercially viable product, it, it's not going to work. Um, so actually we want to fail in some areas, we want to do it in a controlled way as much as possible, and that's really that kind of speed of learning. But, but clearly the, the real excitement now is with Aircraft 2. I think we've been pretty quiet over the last 12 months. We've done an enormous amount of work through some amazing teams with amazing partners in building really all of those foundational stepping stones. But essentially over the last few decades, it's been about delivering incremental improvements on a relatively mature technology base. The chance to now come in and shape the future of aviation in the UK to do that and build a whole aircraft company that we haven't had for decades, to position you know, Vertical, its suppliers, its customers for this total disruption in transportation. I think most of the public and most of the world at large don't really realize how much things are gonna change in the next 20 years time. And so, yes, to have been there at this sort of nascent, exciting, uh, innovative part of the industry and to watch it grow and then to hopefully leave a legacy, uh, both in terms of the talent, the training, the capabilities, but also the societal benefit, hugely exciting. Well, if you're fascinated by Evatol aircraft and the whole advanced air mobility phenomenon as much as we are, please keep coming back for more at AINonline.com slash futureflight. And thank you for watching.